I was a teenager when I first heard Stan Getz. I just got into jazz and I absolutely loved the drive, the intensity and the unmistakable groove of a really swinging band. Cannonball Adderley was my all-time hero, but Stan Getz, well, his light tone and his more subtle swing feel did absolutely nothing for me. To be honest, I kind of thought he was just this airy-fairy musician that couldn't really swing. But man, I couldn't have been more wrong. He's an absolute mother I knew he had amazing jazz pedigree. I mean, he played with Roy Haynes, Al Haig, Max Roach. He even made two albums with Dizzy Gillespie. But even that wasn't enough for teenage me. I only realised how much of an idiot I'd been when I stumbled across his recording of I Want To Be Happy with the Oscar Peterson trio. And even then, I only checked it out because of Oscar Peterson. But anyway, have a listen. <laughs> And that swings like mad, right? The whole band's on fire, and the feel is so good that it genuinely took me a while to realise there aren't any drums. But the thing I find crazy is that Stan Getz has that killer swing feel, but without it being as accented as someone like Cannonball Adderley or Sonny Stitt, both of whom get a lot of their swing by mixing together accented notes and muted notes. That's pretty spiky, right? And that adds so much energy and so much of a sense of swing. Now, Stan Getz still uses accents, but it's a lot more subtle and a lot more based on how he uses his breath and his fingers. He uses breath accents on the offbeats and he moves his fingers perfectly together so that it creates this almost percussive sound on the instrument. But it wasn't just his swing feel that shocked me. He also uses one of my favourite techniques and one that I never really associate with Stan Getz or any of the cool jazz musicians. Riffing. Leading into his third chorus, he plays this really simple but incredible line. And then at the end of the chorus, he plays this riff, which is straight out of Lester Young's toolbox. And both of these really help to lift the solo, and they've got so much drive, it helps lead us from one chorus into the next. It's genius. And this mix of simple riffs and more bop-like language is genuinely one of my favourite things. I mean, Rollins does it, Dexter does it, Joshua Redman does it, I try to do it. Had I realised that Lester Young does it so well, I'd have probably checked him out years ago. Of course, it's not just the way that he swings and uses riffs that makes his playing so great. The whole solo is a masterclass in jazz language. If we have another listen to that first clip we heard. So he's on a C minor seven and he starts off with this chromatic run that keeps the chord tones G and E flat on the beat. Ending with a nice bit of syncopation. And then he adds in this bluesy bit of chromaticism to give the line some more interesting shape. Before continuing that descent he started in the previous bar. Bit of bebop scale, before a classic bit of jazz language. Going up to the flat 9 on the D7. Enclosing that third going then down to the third in the G7. Chord tones, getting us to C7 and more chord tones. And then this really cool like bluesy chromatic run that highlights the flat third or the sharp ninth on that C7. That's eight bars crammed with really good stuff and it's not relying on any complicated substitutions to sound good, it's just really nailing the fundamentals. But of course, a single solo would not have been enough to make me completely change my mind on Stan Getz. Thing is though, none of the stuff I've mentioned is limited to this one solo, or even to this one album. His solo on Move from his 1951 Live at Storyville recordings 
swings like mad and is filled with great language. And later in the solo, he mixes in riffs with his bop language. It's so good, and there are countless other examples of this throughout all of his recordings. You've probably noticed that all the examples we've listened to have been pretty quick, right? And at least for me, it's his up-tempo playing that really highlights how wrong I was. On slower tunes, even on mid-tempo ones, his light tone and his more subtle accents really do steer him more into that cool jazz mould, which I'm just less into personally. I mean, check out I Was Doing Alright from that same album with Oscar Peterson. <laughs> The actual content of his playing, you know, his phrases and everything, is still great, don't get me wrong, but it doesn't have the same exciting bounce and sense of urgency. And a lot of the things that I love about his up-tempo playing just aren't there quite as strongly. But again, this is all personal preference. But the thing is, now I've been able to clock just how insane Stan Getz is, it's so much easier for me to look past those personal preferences. Fine, I might not be as into the cool jazz style and that lighter tone, but there's so much great stuff to enjoy in Stan Getz's playing, and I was so wrong to write it off for as long as I did. If you've enjoyed this video, please do consider supporting me through my Patreon. Talking about copyrighted music like this does unfortunately mean that YouTube withholds all advertising revenue from these videos, so your support really helps me to continue to make them for you. In return, there are a whole bunch of different perks, behind the scenes content, Q&A live streams, lessons that don't quite make it into full YouTube videos. There's a link down in the description and I'm truly grateful to any of you that sign up. I'll see you in the next video.